Okay, the original factory liners were at 0 0.010, ten thousandths. And I want to bring the new liners up uh, another four thousandths higher than that to be 14. The, the shims that I bought are 32 thousandths thick. So, um, if I were to cut this 32 thousandths deeper than it is now, I would be back at 10. So I'm going to be 4 thousandths shy of that, which would be 28 thousandths. So I need to add 20, I need to cut down 28 thousandths from where it's at. That's where they're measuring. And I want to go to uh, all the way to 5, 6. So that's quite a little bit. So what I'm going to do to start is this thing is now up above the ledge. I'm going to move this thing and I can feel it's free floating. And I'm going to turn this down until it just starts to touch. Right there. And also you can feel it right here. You can see it right there. It wants to stop there. This little mark here on the tool, uh, and these little marks on the wheel are one thousandth of an inch. So I'm just going to set it right there, and I'm going to close it in. And I'm going to turn this thing, and I'm going to feel it. Because what I'm going to feel for is if it's touching evenly, or if it's scraping hard in one side and not scraping hard in the other. Like maybe the tool's not, not uh, sitting flush or proper to the uh, counterboard. So that's what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to turn it really nice and gently with it just barely touching and uh, feel it to feel to make sure that it's actually flat and it's just touching. Two more thousands. Let's see where I'm at now. Fifty-five and a half. Fifty-five and a half. Yep. So, we'll move this thing about a half a notch. Right there. That should put it right on it. All right. Now let's see where we're at. Fifty six. Six. It gets liner number one. Now I'm going to move this to cylinder number two. Before I can, I have to retract the cutter. So I'll move it over here. Unlock it. Retract it back in. There we go. Just snug it back down so it don't fall out. There. And then unbolt my tool and move to cylinder number two.
All right, I'm gonna double check this, and we'll see where uh, we actually ended up. Let's see what we got. What is it, what is it? 56. Beautiful. Okay, so I counterboard all six cylinders. Uh, I had a buddy help me a little bit from the farm, but uh, pretty much did it myself. I'm pretty proud of that. Got my own tool to do it. Uh, you know, I'm no professional at this. It's just my own truck, my own engine. Just trying to get the job done so I can put this thing back together. It needed it bad. And, uh, you know, the guys in the shop here, uh, you know, the shop that I'm at, they're, they're letting me use their space. They already know how to do all this stuff, and you know, they kind of give their input as well. But uh, I'm pretty hungry, you know, I like to do things myself in my own way, so. That's, uh, that's where we're at on it. Uh, now we need to start cleaning all this up. And I do have, down in the bottom of the holes, uh, you know, that piece of cardboard with, you know, electrical tape around it and stuff that I showed earlier to catch all of these shavings. Because if you don't, those shavings are gonna drop right through that hole and straight down onto the uh, the uh, crank bearings. You know, it's like a, the crank throw is like this big metal thing in there and then the bearing, and then there's like a tiny space where the bearing is and the shavings get right in between those two. So it can create a big mess. So you don't want stuff to fall down in here. You want to you want to make you some cardboard cutouts that fit the inside of these holes, electrical tape around them where they fit snug down in these holes and catch any debris, metal shavings if you clean it or anything like that. It's very important, uh, you know. And even when you do that, you should still have underneath that. You know, I put pig mats. I got pig towels. I got the crank throws actually uh, wrapped with pig mats and tape like I showed earlier uh, as well when I was underneath the truck when I was taking things apart. So very important to stay clean when you're working up here. Very important that this this top surface stays really nice and flat and polished. Okay, so I have some sharpening stone oil that I got at uh, Home Depot. And I've got me a, a sharpening stone uh, I'm using the fine side of it to just kind of rough out all these uh, coolant spots and rust spots and rusty edges, you know, where the new gasket and everything's going to sit. And then I've got a, a really fine uh, lapping stone and then a fine polishing stone. And uh, just kind of lapping this down and polishing it down and finishing it off. I'm not really taking enough material off of it to not see in the imprints from the old gasket. I'm starting to see the machining uh, surface, you know, again, where the machining was done when it was new. I'm not gonna go past that point. I'm just, just, just polishing it up and smoothing it out a little bit and taking the bumps off of it so the new gasket will seal really well. And I'm using this uh, sharpening stone oil. When I get all done, when you go to put the gasket on here, you don't want any oil on the surface. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna clean this with acetone. Acetone will strip all the oils off the surface and uh, allow the gasket to seal uh, to the surface quite well. So, you know, just keep that in mind when you go to put your gasket on. You know, we're gonna we're, we're gonna have the head probably back in here and raised up and, and suspended above this thing. Uh, and then the last thing we do before we put the head down, we're gonna drop the head down onto the onto the deck. We're gonna slide the gasket in here and seat it and then we're gonna drop the head onto the gasket. That way we don't tear the gasket up trying to get the head in here, we don't bump it, things like that. So, but at that point, you know, this thing should be uh, nice and clean and it should be uh, wiped down good with acetone. There should be no oil residue left on it. It should be nice and dry. And of course, the bottom of the head should be the same way. So, let me get back to work and finish uh, lapping this thing a little bit. 